hey, we're all still alive in our survivor pools. Let's try to keep it going at least another week with Scratching and Surviving coming up next. All right, guys, if you were here yesterday for the video, you got a bit of an overview on what it is we do here or what I in particular do as far as the survivor pools and how I'm going to help guide you guys to hopefully winning your pool and pocketing all that cash. Those of you who were here last year, you know my method. You know what I am all about. I'm all about the numbers, guys. I'm not going to start breaking down why I think this quarterback is better than that quarterback. I can do it, but it's not going to help you win your survivor pool. I know a lot of you guys sort of think that way, and it's understandable, but it's really a numbers game. It's really about game theory. That's how we're going to get the edge on our opponents. One other thing, guys, this is all brought to you by the Sharp app. Some of you are watching it in the app right now. Some of you are over on YouTube. If you do not have the Sharp app, do us a favor and check down below. There's a link to download the app for free. It's going to greatly help you, not just with your survivor pools, with all of the pools that you have for football this year, as well as any bets you're looking to make, prop bets, sides, totals, money lines, whatever it is, we've got you covered here at the Sharp app. So give us a check out in the App Store, Play Store, or just click on the link down below. Also, if you want the pro membership of the Sharp app, you want to get a free month of that, I'm going to put a code down below, Sharp NFL 22 You could get one month free of pro and uh, just give us a look. Check us out. So enough of that, guys. Let's dive into what we've got going on here. Week one in Survivor Pools. As I mentioned in the video yesterday, if you guys have not seen that video, I, I strongly urge you watching that before you watch this one. Check yesterday's video out. But we'd like to use something called Survivor Grid. And I use that in conjunction with a website or, or a spreadsheet that I have built. We're going to go over all of that today. And let's take a look at Survivor Grid. I'll bring it up now. Here's SurvivorGrid.com. Those of you from last season are familiar with this. I think it's one of the uh, best tools out there. And it's free to help you guys with your Survivor pool. So... Let's just briefly go over exactly what you're looking at here. You've got the EV, all right? And I'm not going to go into detail. I don't know exactly how they're calculating their EV, but I could tell you the main components of that. But let's go over W percentage first. That's the win percentage um, that's based on the line, the Vegas line. I, mine is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to show you that in a second when we go to my spreadsheet. But we're going to be in the same ballpark here on win percentage based on the lines that be, are being offered. P percentage this is probably the most critical thing and the best thing that Survivor Grid does for us. This P percentage is a pick percentage, right? This is the percentage, the percentage of people across pools throughout the world that that is calculating how many people are taking each one of these teams in those pools. So they go through CBS and Yahoo and all the major websites and they get that data and then post it here for us. Now, it's going to be slightly different, of course, than maybe your pool. Because depending on how many people you have in your pool will be just how highly correlated it's going to be to Survivor Grid. And of course, having double elimination picks, things like that are going to change uh, the percentages on who people are taking. But really a good way to uh, judge just where the market is and where people in your pool are going to be. Remember, the more people in your pool, and if it's a pretty standard uh, pool where you're not making double picks, the closer you're going to get to the Survivor Grid numbers if you're in a small pool, it only takes a couple of people to be off where the uh, rest of the market is to really skew those numbers. So larger pool, you're going to be more in line with what we're looking at on Survivor Grid. Uh, Survivor Grid. Let's just take a look quick and uh, see what we got going on. So they've got San Francisco as the best EV play. It would be a good time, I guess, to talk about the EV. Now, the EV here is going to be based on future value and the current line on the game. So the, the probability that they win this game, the future value of this team, um, and actually more so than future value. We're going to talk about future value on my spreadsheet. More so, it's really the pick percentage. So the lower the percentage of people taking a game, the higher the EV is going to go, and then the higher the win percentage, the possibility of this team winning, in other words, the higher the spread is, the higher the EV is going to go. So what we're really looking for is a combination of you want a team that's being low picked with a great chance of winning. That's going to be a high EV. And by EV, they mean expected value. 
what that's saying is if you could possibly pick, if you had 100 people in your league and you could possibly pick San Francisco and know that you'd be the only one on San Francisco, obviously that is a high leverage play. It would be high EV. So if you were the one sole person and everybody else in your pool took either Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Baltimore, Denver, they took all those other teams and you were the only one sitting on San Francisco, the EV is so good, you could potentially win the pool if those other teams all lost, right? So that's the objective here. We're always looking for spots where we could get a team close to being the best team on the board or um, one of the best teams on the board, but maybe they're being undervalued and, and not taken by a lot of people in the market. Now, why do people not take the best team week in, week out? Well, you have to look at future value of a team. Now, depending on the size of the pool you're in, future value is going to become more and more important the larger the pool, right? So if you're in a small pool, we talked about it yesterday, small pool, if you're up against just one person, you're just going to take whatever the best line is, um, the highest line for that game, or maybe the second highest line. You don't want to fool around too much there. You want to be very chalky. As you increase, you get to the 10 person, maybe you're still chalky, 25, still a little chalky. You get to 50, 100, you need to loosen up a little bit. Just taking the chalk is not going to get it done for us. Again, it's like a GPP in uh, DFS. You need to have some uniqueness to your lineups in GPPs in order to win the big prizes. Just taking the chalk is good for cash games. Not going to help you, though, in the big GPP. So look at this like a big GPP for you DFS players. All right, let's head back into Survivor Grid, and we'll take a look at some future value. Obviously, you guys all have every team available to you. Let's just go under the assumption we're on an average type of pool, maybe 100 people in a pool. You've only got one entry. Which way are we going? Well, we'll look at it on my spreadsheet because that's going to be able to break it down more. But right away, you want to start looking at the teams that are being taken highly, right? So 17.2% on Indianapolis, 17.7 on Denver, 14.3 on Tennessee, 11.7, uh, or I said 11.7 on Denver, 17.9 on Baltimore. Uh, these are the teams that are being taken the most. Why? Now, they're not all the highest point spreads, although Indianapolis is right now the highest spread on here. Let me see, though, on the spreadsheet. I'll open up the spreadsheet for you guys so you can take a look at that. But on the spreadsheet, I calculate the actual odds from the Sharp app. I'll show you guys how to do that. So Indianapolis, still the largest favorite at minus 302. This is what you really want to look at. You want to look at the money line. And what I like to do is take the midpoint from the both sides of the money line, okay? So if we look at Indianapolis and Houston, we want to take a midpoint. So you want to look for inside the Sharp app. I'm uh, going through the app now. You want to look at wherever the midpoint is between the line that we're getting on Indianapolis and the line that you're getting on Houston. That midpoint is going to be the most accurate point uh, for predicting how what the probability is, at least, of this team winning. So if we look at the Indianapolis Houston game, it is minus 320 and plus 283 currently. So let's see if we're still accurate here. And that's about right. We're, we're going to be right around minus 301, minus 302, right? So you don't have to be super, super precise, but we want to get in the ballpark here. So that tells us we've got a 75% chance of the Indianapolis game winning, Indy winning that game. San Francisco has a 73% chance based on a minus 277 line. Baltimore, a little more, uh, minus 290, 74.36. All right, so now when we look at this spreadsheet, I'm putting in my money lines. I've got all the games here. Um, I've got my future value, FV. That's future value. Now, how am I calculating the future value? I'm looking on Survivor Grid. So I'll bring up Survivor Grid, and you can see on Survivor Grid, as you go to week two, three, four, there's a point spread put on each one of these games. I'm looking at the spreads, and then I'm ranking them each week. So... If there's 17 or 16 games in a week, you've got the possibility of being anywhere ranked between 1 and 16. 16 is going to be the weakest team that week. In other words, the team getting the most points as projected. And the team that they're playing, of course, is going to be the biggest favorite of the week. They're going to count for one point. So if I go back to the spreadsheet here, when you look at future value, that's just adding up the remaining game, remainder of the games for that team and they're ranking where they rank. So if they rank 10th one week, 5th another week, that's 15 points going into future value. Now, the lower the number on future value, the better it is, the more value that team has. So there's more weeks that we could potentially pick that team. 
these teams with the high numbers, Carolina, Washington, right, New Orleans, not as many weeks that we're going to be able to take those teams. So that makes sense when we look at it on Survivor Grid. If you go out and if we just look at New Orleans, you can see there's not many great opportunities. They play Seattle in week five. You've got Atlanta in week 15, uh, maybe Carolina in week 18. Not a ton of opportunities here to take New Orleans. So that's why in a larger pool, New Orleans may show up as a, a potential play because there's not a lot of opportunities to take that team. Now, let's just take a look at what I've got going on inside uh, of the of the spreadsheet. Actually, we'll just go uh, we'll go right through the columns here. This pick percentage is just taken strictly from Survivor Grid. The Z score. Don't get yourself too worked up on that, but it's just going to let us know who's got the, li the the highest probability of winning this week. Again, we could just look at these win percentages, but this is putting into a score for me that uh, gets calculated in the formula. Again, the same sort of a score for future value. So you're going to see the teams with the uh, with the the highest number are going to have a higher uh, score for future value, and because those teams are. The low, they're lower in future value, right? It just, it'll make more sense in the calculations. Don't get yourself too worked up over it. Just know that teams like Carolina and New Orleans have very little future value. This is the number of unique teams. This is actually what we're going to be looking at mostly. Number of unique teams. Now, I had to extend this from last year from six to seven because I'm now in a pool where I've got, I think it's going to be about 7,000, probably going to be more people, and I've got 150 entries in there. So instead of doing six unique teams, I'm going to probably do seven unique teams for week one. So I'll just show you that pool uh, and we'll start off. Yeah, we'll start off with my pool here and just get a look. I'm looking at at least weighing the future at 100%. All right, the higher my future value, if you look, I'm down here, FV weight, that's future value weight. The higher that number goes, if I weighted at 200%, right, the more it's going to take into account teams that are just bad future value and less, uh, it's going to take into less account teams that are actually favored uh, highly this week. So it's going to look more in teams like Carolina. Now, all of a sudden, when I take a, a, a high weight to the future, Carolina and New Orleans and Tennessee are teams that the model wants me to take at a greater uh, frequency. And then if I go down to zero, where I'm not waiting the future at all, you see those teams sort of disappear. Uh, New Orleans suddenly doesn't become as good a play. And then the teams where we've got the highest percentage, win percentage, those teams become the teams that it would tell me I want to take the most of. So for my purposes, I'm going to probably adjust this to about 100 and see what see what it does for me on 150. Uh, maybe we even do 75. At 75, you could see the seven teams that it likes. In order, we're looking at New Orleans now being the top team, Indy the second most, and then I would be to actually the top team would be uh, Tennessee and New Orleans with Indy again next. And then you're looking at... Uh, San Francisco and Cincinnati, those teams are, are going to start filling it in for me. Denver being uh, the least frequented team that I'm going to be taking with 14 picks if I do this at 75. All right, for you guys, if you have two entries in a pool or if you just have one entry, let's say you have one entry now and you're in a very large pool, we can just change this to one. And what that's going to show you is where you need to be. You're in a large pool. What it's telling you is, New Orleans is the play here because New Orleans, you've got a 67.5% chance to win. Hardly anyone's taking them in the pools, 4.5%. So they are a good pool, a uh, good pick in large pools, right? You're going to be able to save some of the better teams. And you want to do that in these larger pools because you're going to have to survive a long way. You're going to need weeks where the big chalky picks lose. And you're hoping that you can get on the right side of the week's where you get one of these big favorites to lose. If you could get on the right side, if you could catch a game where, like this New Orleans game, where maybe only 5% of your pool, let's say you've got 1,000 people in your pool, only 50 of them are taking that game. If you get some carnage in other games during this the Sunday, you can put yourself in a situation where you've already increased your equity greatly. All right, so you can see the advantage maybe in not playing the chalkiest picks when you're in a large pool, right? Go back to the spreadsheet. If you are in a smaller pool, and let's say we just want to weight this 15% because you're in a pool that it's 25 people. You just want to weight this 
at 50%. I'd be looking at Indianapolis because this is a team, while they do have some future value, right? 182, they're one of the, you know, they're middle to, to one of the better teams of future value. We could take a shot in a smaller pool because future value means less to us, right? So in that type of a pool, we'll be looking at Indianapolis as your pick. Let's say you've got five picks in a smaller pool. Let's say you want to put future value. You probably won't have five picks in that small pool. Let's say you have it in 100 people, though, and you want to put a future value of five. Now, if you wanted to just do two teams, it's telling you Indianapolis and Baltimore would be the two teams that you're going to want to take. You want to split them up three, two. If you want to go three teams, you're looking at Indy, Baltimore, and Tennessee. If we go to four, we're going to split it up with four teams. Now, this is rounding, so we're missing a team in here. Uh, but that team looks like it would be San Francisco. The spreadsheet's not perfect with the rounding, right? But if we were taking just four teams, you'd probably look to uh, maybe two Indianapolis, and then you're looking at a Baltimore, a New Orleans, and a Tennessee. Five would be the even split where we add in San Francisco. You guys could see it. And then six, here are the six teams. Uh, San Fran, Indy, Cincy, Baltimore, New Orleans, and then you're coming down to Tennessee. That's on a 50% weight. If you guys are in a really large pool here and you've got five entries, it's going to change a little bit. And then it gets to the point where if you have five entries and you just want to use two uniques, we're looking at New Orleans and Tennessee. Again, reason being, less future value on these teams. We're going to take a little bit more risk in the present in order to uh, hold on to some value that we have in the future. If we did this with three teams, it would be those same two teams, and then we'd add in one indie, a little bit of a chalkier pick, right? And if we went to uh, four unique teams on five, this is actually giving us uh, six, so we'd probably go one less on the Tennessee. We'd have two with New Orleans, Baltimore, and Indy, all right? So you guys get the idea. There's so many options here when we're looking at week one and ways that we could go, but... Get an idea when we're looking at Survivor Grid here that you're going to want to try to get yourself, uh, depending on the type of pool you're in, you want to try to get yourself off of maybe some of the teams that other people are on, especially on these pools that, that you've got uh, a lot of people in. So let's just go over it quickly one more time. If we've got a large pool and we want to do 100 uh, weighting in 100, let's say we just got a massive pool, one that's really going to be difficult to win. You've got 10,000 people in there. You've only got five entries going to be next to impossible to win. Well, let's go really heavy weight on the future. We're going to go 200% on the future. And let's go, we're going to go with uh, five different teams. We've got five entries. We want five different teams. In that case, we're going to be going, look how unique we're going to be here. We're going to take New Orleans. We're going to take Tennessee. We're going to take Miami. We're going to take Washington. We're going to take Carolina. Now, undoubtedly, we're going to lose one, two, three of these games. No doubt. Matter of fact, we've got in here expected elimination. If I put in my actual of one on each one of these, this is what you're going to be expected to lose. So our loss expectation, we're expected to lose 38% of our picks, right? That's a lot. But again, we're already taking a lottery ticket. This is what we're expected to lose. So you can easily lose two or three games here playing it, but we're taking that lottery ticket of a play um, in the fact that we're in a pool that is so large anyway that you have to take some risk uh, in order to do that. So hopefully you guys have some idea of where we're going to go here. Of course, that the video is only part of what we do. You need to comment down below because that's going to help me in your particular pool. Week one, of course, listen, it's wide open, guys, but we could still be smart about it. And as we go, we're going to start making smarter and smarter decisions. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview of where we're, we're looking, what I'm looking at for my pools. Good luck. I'll talk to you guys in the comments. And uh, let's survive. We'll see you next week.